Hello everyone! Uh, after the death of Mikhail Chigorin, uh, the very strong chess club of St. Petersburg decided to organize a tournament in his honor in 1909. And the St. Petersburg chess club consisted pretty much of only elite players. Uh, this tournament, uh, the St. Petersburg Great Tournament of 1909, uh, consisted of 20 players. And the favorites uh, for winning these tournaments were definitely Karl Schlechter here, uh, Emmanuel Lasker definitely, and uh, the Polish Grandmaster Akiba Rubinstein. Uh, but we'll get back to that after the game. Uh, this game, uh, Savili Tartakover is playing against Karl Schlechter. And Schlechter was known to be a great attacker and a fierce player. And it's quite interesting how Tartakover uh, doesn't allow him a chance to attack and really makes him go for the defense. Uh, so let's see the game. Tartakover has the white pieces and he plays e4. Uh, e5 and bishop, uh, sorry, f4, the king's gambit. Uh, bishop to c5, uh, Schlechter declines the gambit and, uh, well, uh, decides not to go for it. Uh, knight to f3, uh, d6, now f captures on e5, d captures on e5, and c3, preparing d4. Uh, knight to f6 by Schlechter, and uh, I've seen an analysis by Lasker. Lasker says that uh, uh, the, the sacrificing the e5 pawn is pretty much justified, as the knight uh, won't really won't really be doing anything on e5. Uh, of course, the engine disagrees with this, but uh, what are you going to do? Lasker said it. Uh, so, uh, knight captures an e5 by Tartakover. Now, uh, Schlechter castles and d4. Uh, bishop to d6 and uh, knight back to f3. Uh, if you were to defend d4 knight with knight to d2, for, for example, then bishop captures an e5, d captures an e5, uh, and after knight to g4, uh, this knight and g4 is really annoying, <clears throat> annoying for white, and you can't really kick it away from there. You, you know, you can't play a move like h3, queen to h4 is coming. Uh, there's really no point in doubling up your pawns like this. You can't defend with knight to f3. This loses immediately to queen captures on d1, uh, followed by knight to f2, check forking the king and the rook. So instead of all of this, after bishop to d6, knight to f3 by Tartakover. Uh, knight captures on e4 now, uh, winning back the pawn, bishop to d3, uh, rook to e8, defending the knight and also preparing some nasty discoveries, uh, Tartakover castles, uh, and h6. And again, Lasker really criticizes Schlechter for playing this h6 move. Uh, Lasker says that the threat of bishop captures knight on e4 and rook captures, uh, followed by knight to g5 and queen to h5 is only imaginary. White doesn't really have this. Uh, but uh, interestingly enough, uh, h6 is the engine's favorite move, so I guess Karl Schlechter knew what he was doing. Uh, knight b to d2 and knight back to f6. Uh, knight to c4 now to harass this very strong dark square bishop on d6. Uh, c5. And uh, while he played this c5 move, it seems like, okay, he's challenging the center. Uh, but one other thing he's doing, if white doesn't capture this uh, bishop on d6 immediately, then bishop to c c7 might be an idea, uh, which is definitely definitely worth considering. This is a very powerful piece. Uh, knight f to e5 now by Tartakover, and this is the critical moment in the game already on move 12. Uh, there are a lot of moves for black here to consider. Uh, you definitely don't want to give away this uh, strong bishop. Uh, so bishop to c7 is definitely an idea. Uh, rook to e6, okay, maybe you do want to give it up, but at least, you know, get your rook into the game with uh, rook captures, if the knight captures it. Uh, but the worst uh, the worst uh, thing Schlechter could have done uh, uh, is the move he did. He played c captures on d4. And immediately he allows uh, uh, Tartakover to go, to go for a fierce attack. And uh, before I show the attack, uh, the move like bishop to e6 doesn't work uh, because of a very uh, because of a series of tactical shots. Uh, knight captures on d6, queen captures, uh, and rook captures on f6. Uh, g captures on f6, and now knight to g4, threatening f6 and h6. And uh, you can't really defend both of these threats. Uh, you can't even capture the knight if uh, bishop captures knight and queen captures. Uh, king to f8, now bishop captures on h6 with check, uh, king e7, uh, and now rook to e1, check. King d8, rook captures, forcing the king to capture back. Uh, now queen to c8 with check. Uh, queen blocks, and now queen captures on b7, and black loses the rook. 
So it's uh, some, this is some eight moves you have to calculate, but it's pretty much all forced, so it's not really a problem. Uh, and you, you can save the rook, for example, with knight to d7, uh, you simply get uh, queen to e4 check. And now if you block with the queen, you lose the rook. Uh, and if you block with the knight, well, then d captures on e5, uh, a rook to b8, any move black plays doesn't really matter. Uh, e captures on f6 with check. And now uh, the black king is getting made it. Queen to a4 check, uh, king d6, uh, bishop f4 check, uh, king e6, queen c6 check, queen blocks, and queen d6, this is checkmate. So, okay, this is a lot of moves, but it's pretty much all forced. Uh, this wouldn't really be much of an issue for Tartakover if uh, bishop to e6 was played. So that's why bishop to e6 doesn't work. But okay, uh, Schlechter played c captures on d4. And here Tartakover goes for the attack. Knight captures on f7, uh, sacrificing the knight. Uh, you can't really decline the sacrifice as your queen is attacked. Even if you move the queen, uh, your bishop is attacked twice from the knight on f7 and the knight on c4. So you do have to capture it. Uh, king captures on f7 and now uh, queen to h5 with check. Uh, the knight of course can capture, it's pinned. Uh, bringing the king uh, to the e-file with king e7 or king to e6 uh, wouldn't really be good for black. Uh, this uh, this would be quite bad. Uh, and uh, Schlechter played king to g8. And okay, this is the best move. Uh, and now we have this tricky move, rook captures on f6 by Tartakover. And uh, white can't re black can't recapture the rook. Uh, if you play queen captures uh, rook on f6, you simply lose the rook on e8. So you just lost a knight on f6. This is terrible for black. And uh, if instead of queen captures you play uh, g captures on f6, uh, you get queen to g6 check. And after king to f8, bishop captures with check. Uh, king e7, uh, queen to h7 check. Now king e6, queen f5 check. King f7, and now knight captures on d6. Uh, getting the queen to d6, queen captures. And now queen to h7 check again, uh, king to e6, and now bishop to c4 with check. And uh, black has to give up the queen, as if the king goes to e5, uh, rook to e1 is checkmate. Uh, so the rook on f6, uh, on f6 uh, cannot be captured. Uh, rook to e1 with check by Schlechter. Uh, rook, to e, uh, rook to f1 defending, now rook captures and bishop captures. Not king captures, you don't want to allow uh, black to get any pieces into the game uh, with tempo. Uh, bishop to f8, uh, as the bishop was attacked uh, with the knight on c4. Uh, now comes bishop captures on h6. Uh, Schlechter replies with queen to f6. Uh, again, capturing the, bish uh, capturing the bishop with g captures on h6 uh, wouldn't really achieve much for black. Uh, queen to g6 with check, king to h8. Uh, now knight to e5, and there is no defense against knight to f7. You, you have to play something, queen to e7, and now knight to f7 check, this wins the queen, and uh, game over. And uh, if instead of uh, king to h8 you play something like bishop to g7 to defend, again knight to d6, and uh, well, black doesn't really have a move, bishop to c4 is coming. Uh, for example, any move, knight to a6, bishop c4 check, uh, king has to move, now uh, checking the king and forking the queen. Uh, after the king moves, you don't even have to recapture, you don't even have to capture the queen, simply uh, knight g5, a discovered check from the bishop, and, uh, well, now if the king goes to f8, queen to f7 is checkmate. If the king goes to h8, uh, queen to h7 is checkmate. Uh, so the bishop can't be captured. Uh, queen to f6 by Schlechter, and now bishop to g5, attacking the queen, queen to f7, uh, uh, f5, pinning the bishop, uh, knight to d6, uh, offering now a knight, uh, and you don't you, you don't really have a choice. You do have to you do have to capture the knight. Uh, if you move the queen, you lose the bishop on c8. Uh, also, if you move the queen from the f file, queen to f7 is an idea. Uh, so the knight has to be accepted. The bishop captures on d6, and now comes bishop to c4 with check. Uh, bishop to e6, blocking, and now rook to f1. And uh, you have to uh, give up the queen now. Uh, if you try and uh, defend the queen, for example, with uh, queen to e5 to still defend the bishop on e6, uh, this loses to queen e8 check. And after king to h7, uh, bishop to d3 check, and now uh, there are no moves for black g6, simply queen captures, king h8, and queen to h7 checkmate. Uh, 
Uh, so after rook to f1, okay, Schlechter decided to now give up the queen. Uh, queen captures on f1, bishop captures on f1, and knight to d7. It seems he might have enough uh, material for the queen, but uh, not really. Uh, bishop to d3, uh, with ideas of uh, queen h7 or bishop to g6, depending on what black plays. Uh, knight to f8, defending both threats, and now c captures on d4. Uh, grabbing a pawn, why not? Uh, bishop to f7 with a tempo on the queen, queen to f3, uh, knight to e6 now. Uh, bishop back to e3, rook to b8, uh, protecting the b7 pawn, uh, g4, uh, g5, and we have queen to f6. Uh, bishop to f8, black is trying to create some sort of a fortress, but this will be hard as white has the bishop pair. Black has also the bishop pair, but uh, white has a bishop pair and the queen. Uh, bishop to h7 check, now forcing uh, the king to capture the bishop, unfortunately for black. Uh, king captures, now bishop, uh, queen captures bishop on f7 with check, uh, knight to g7, and we have bishop captures on g5, and uh, here Karl Schlechter resigned the game, as uh, he can't really move any of his pieces, this is very unfortunate. Uh, if he tries to play b5 to, to be able to get the rook into the game, uh, h4, preparing h5 and h6, and if you try to unpin, then simply bishop to f6, uh, pinning that knight, uh, and black doesn't have any moves to play, h5, h6 is coming, this is completely winning uh, for white. So yeah, uh, a very nice game by Mr. Tartakover, and uh, well, uh, a very nice game by Karl Schlechter as well, although uh, Tartakover really had some inspiration this game. And even though uh, he could play a game like this in the strong St. Louis uh, chess tournament uh, in 1909, uh, in the end, he won 11th place. Uh, Akiba Rubinstein, the Polish Grandmaster, won the tournament with 13.5 points. Uh, Lasker was second also with 13.5 points, but uh, with some... Uh, well, he had... Uh, Rubinstein had some better criteria, ad additional criteria. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, if any of you would enjoy uh, m maybe a short series of this tournament, the very strong St. Petersburg tournament of 1909, uh, featuring Akiba Rubinstein and some of his games, uh, do write uh, hashtag Rubinstein or hashtag Akiba uh, in the comments so I will know if, if people are interested. So yeah, uh, that's it. Uh, I do hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Guillaume Gauthier, uh, Helko Lewin, uh, sorry, Heiko Lewin, uh, Armin Nadarevitz, and uh, Jacob Hartley for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching, and uh, I will see you soon.